The Venus Project Team Speak Seminar, July 8th, 2012. What I'm talking about now is very unpopular. And it's called the phrase that I use, a nothing thing. When I say music is a nothing thing, I'd like to tell you what I mean by that. Like the Eiffel Tower. Those of you that are familiar with the Eiffel Tower, it's a symbol in France, the Eiffel Tower. And the architect named Eiffel that designed it did a very good job of the structure, but it's a nothing thing unless it has a wind generator on top. Otherwise, it's a symbol of France. By nothing thing, I mean it costs millions, and I'd rather put that money in a something thing. When they build a monument to a veteran, to the many veterans that gave their lives for this country, sometimes they spend millions of dollars on that monument, an ark or a tremendous monument to all the soldiers that lost, lost their lives. I would call that, I myself, a nothing thing, unless they took those millions and put it in the veterans' hospital for MRI machines, x-ray machines, additional surgical equipment, larger equipment to help those that have lost their limbs, work on artificial limbs so they can walk around. That's a something thing. But building a monument is a nothing thing. Do you understand that? In other words, if you have the five million or ten million you're going to put into that monument, put it into a something thing. Because we don't have infinite supply of materials. And now, if at a later date they put a wind generator on the Eiffel Tower, it becomes a something thing. If you only study music, music alone, you raise a child with musical instruments and to study reading music, playing music, he cannot survive with that alone. There's nothing in music that enables a person to survive if music is studied or used in motion pictures to emphasize certain things, it could become a something thing. Now, then there's so much of a nothing thing. Just going for a cruise on an ocean liner may please you in traveling to different countries, but if you bring information to those countries and study different cultures and bring back that information that gives us knowledge about different cultures and different values, it becomes a something thing. But if you just go on an ocean liner for a cruise, it means something to you, but it serves no real value. Now they say that the classics, reading the classics, improves the mental state of people. France is very classical, England has a great deal of the classics, and Germany, and the US. But they don't seem less warlike. They get in as many wars and more wars in the past. So if they say the classics enlighten people, I see no evidence of that. People that go to the opera are not against war or against killing or against prisons or against inadequate education. And so there are also people that are against abortion. That's a nothing thing. Against mass killing, of war, when, when planes drop bombs over cities, they kill children, pregnant women, thousands of people that have nothing to do with the war, that didn't sponsor the war or advocate the war. That would be dropping bombs on cities, just a cruel and stupid practice. It doesn't amount to anything. It doesn't make people more peaceful. Oh, you might win the war, you might smash an existing government, put them out of office, but it doesn't alter the thinking process of people. War merely knocks the power structure out. Now that's a part of the problem, but the real problem is the values that people hold. Bigotry, racism, selfishness, self-centeredness, all of those are the problems that we have to face and learn how to deal with. You're not dealing with a problem when you kill people if they don't understand their democracy. If they don't understand it, how can they possibly install it? So if you bomb the hell out of them, they might surrender. But that doesn't do the job. 
it's much more efficient to spend your money and time on training people of the advantages of a cooperative society. Do you understand what that means? When I say dancing is a nothing thing, I understand it's an expression where people express themselves. They express themselves by, oh, joy and running along the beach and spinning around because they're full of joy. But that joy is self-centered. It's an ego trip. It doesn't add anything to another person's life. Do you understand how I mean that now? I understand that music can be very pleasing. Now there's people that beat on a drum and you can change your rhythm and people can move with it and say, man, that man, he's a great drummer. But what does drummers do? What does it do for people? It entertains them, it amuses them, they become interested in it, they collect records of drummers, but that doesn't do anything for society. If the drums are used to show primitive cultures, how they beat on drums before the war with anxiety, to relieve their anxiety, but their wars were about nothing. All the ancient wars were about one leadership with a set of values who disagreed with another leader. Now, did the right leader always win? We don't know that. Do you understand? Hitler won over Poland, but what did he win? What did he bring to Poland? So the point is, World War I may have improved technology because it was sponsored, not because of the war. They try to teach kids in universities war is a stimulus for invention. They make airplanes faster, better, carry higher bomb loads. But really, is it a something thing? Does it amount to anything? The ability to destroy other nations? If Germany succeeded in building a nuclear bomb, if we spend all the money on the Manhattan Project to bridge the difference between nations, to try to work out a workable solution so you didn't have to kill each other, I think if we train people in studying different cultures and how to bridge the difference, it might become a something thing. But as long as navies exist and you spend billions on aircraft carriers and you make them better and more destructive, it becomes a nothing thing. It doesn't amount to anything. Now, of course, most people don't read books that amount to something because their ambitions are self-centered. Nations, as a rule, are interested in promoting that nation. They're not interested in a global society working together, living in peace. Doctors would be wonderful if they used medicine to help people at no profit. Profit is a nothing thing. It makes some people powerful, wealthy, and influential. But the influence is not constructive influence. It's me for myself, and what can I do to beat the other guy? The thing you can do to beat the other guy is share your ideas with the other guy. It's the sharing of ideas that enables a nation to become high-tech. Without the sharing of ideas, books on electronics, music, all the different subjects are attempts to share ideas. Some of the ideas amount to nothing that is shared, such as nations ought to be good, kinder, and more humane to one another. That doesn't tell you how to attain that, so it's a nothing thing. It's a nothing thing when I said the Zeitgeist movement was a nothing thing, I meant of itself, without advocating a resource-based economy and what a resource-based economy is and drop the notions of criticizing another country without offering an alternative, it becomes a nothing thing. It makes people tense, it makes them feel sympathetic. Yes, we ought to learn to live together in peace and harmony. How do you attain that? And if you don't deal with that, it's a nothing thing. So what is a nothing thing and a something thing? A something thing might be a watch and it might tell you time better than you can estimate it. A nothing thing is earrings. A nothing thing well, is a symbol. You wear a ring if you went to a certain school with a certain pattern on it and you recognize another person went to the same school. But really, the ring 
if it had seven different chips in it, that if you were in an accident, that ring would bring your medical information forward. It becomes a support of those things. So in the future, they will do more about nothing things than I am doing here. Because in this system, we learn to like and worship nothing things. We want the signature of movie stars. That's a nothing thing. It's only used to show other people, hey, I got Jimmy Grant's signature. I got Kennedy's signature. It's only to show other people. But if everybody died on Earth and you had all those signatures, who are you going to show it to? That's a nothing thing. Now, false teeth are a something thing. You can chew with it if you don't have teeth. A hearing aid enables you to hear, but if you listen to hard rock with it, the hearing aid is about no use. People say, what about just a sheer enjoyment? Well, what about enjoyment of a bullfight, or feeding Christians and lions, or drinking alcohol? So cigarettes are pure enjoyment. Smoking pipe is enjoyment. But it's a nothing thing. It's detrimental to human health. It doesn't do any good. But if you see people you like smoking a pipe, we try to emulate them. And that's a bad influence on the younger generation. Learning to beat drums may be a skill and require a very good sense of timing. For what? For what end? So I would say in the future, people will study things that have a definite effect on society, a progressive effect, some effect improving their health. And that would be motions that anatomists and physiologists study, certain types of bodily movements that keep all the joints moving and, and in different, finding the best way to move can be a study and can be a something thing for people that are doing exercise to diminish pain in the future. That's a something thing. But if it's just based on your feelings, if you dance, it's useful. But it's not useful for people that dance that have no operational definitions and know nothing about the world. In other words, some people say we are what we eat. Well, Hitler was a vegetarian, but he was a jackass in many ways. So I'm not too interested in people eating good, healthy food. I'm more interested in what goes into their head than their gut. So with good food, you can build a big army and a good army, and they can slaughter thousands of people. With healthy food, you can improve the eyesight. For what end is what I'm asking? What is the end goal? What is it that society really wants? I don't think they know. They want things to remain as they are if they're doing well in that society. If they're not doing well, they'd like to see change. But if you ask them what kind of change they want, well, I want steady jobs for people. You mean no more automation? What do you mean by steady jobs for people? That the coachman always sits in back of the coach and uses horses? That the automobile coming in Will they travel faster and farther and do away with the horse shoes and all that sort of thing? Yes, that's what I mean. The future is always changing and always rendering certain professions obsolete. We no longer have many people that shoe horses, except in the park where you ride horses. So if you try to keep things as they are, then I would say you have no concern for the future. And if you have no concern for the future, and if it's just your self-centeredness, I would say that that is detrimental to society, not to you. If you live for yourself and you have a big house, lots of money in the bank, and investment in many industries, that's good for you. But it's not good for the people as a whole. That's what I mean by nothing thing. Now, music can become a something thing if you use it in a film showing the history of civilization and that music is part of it, and concerts, and classical music, Bach, Bach, Brahm, Wagner, if you have all that music going in the background of a motion picture about the history of civilization, music can strengthen the memory and the views. When music is used in combination with something, it becomes a something thing. Just like earrings that have a chip in it, that give doctors your physical condition, make all the records come forth. If you have a chip in there that does that, 
when they bring you into a hospital when you've had an automobile accident and you're unconscious, this will bring out all the information without the doctor having to try to ask you what happened. So I would say earrings could become something. Right now, they're nothing things. Now, I'm not asking you to give up your earrings or anything, or running a stainless steel ring through your tongue or ear would interfere with chewing and in, does nothing but make helps you identify with the generation you grew up with. I would say that's why people wear a steel band through their tongue. They want to identify with a group. And that's why a person cuts his hair and lets it just stick up in the middle. All those are nothing things. Now, do you have some aspects you want me to talk about? If the nothing thing is good for an individual, yes it is. It's not good for society. Yeah. Some people um, embrace the idea of playing classical music helps a baby. To think well, there those. seems to be a correlation between mathematics and classical music. It seems if you play classical music, it increases the range of association, but the music alone doesn't do it. With math, with other things, it does. So music alone is a nothing thing. Music in association with events is a something thing. And so, in times, for example, I'll tell you what a nothing thing is. When they put a military aircraft in front of a building, or a school, they have military aircraft, sometimes they have cannons in the parks, and that's a nothing thing. It's detrimental to people. What you should have in the park are statues of people like Louis Pasteur or Edison, or people that made contributions to the world, not generals and military people. Their contribution is smashing a country that doesn't see eye to eye with us. We have a certain value system. We believe our value system is correct, but we don't invite participants and say, what do you think of our value system? We don't ask other countries, what do you think of our value system? Why are you building an army? Because the country next to me is thinking of invading me, according to their books. So they're frightened, so they build armament. But they don't build armament because they're bad. They build armament because they're threatened. But if you can learn how to remove the threat between nations, there's no need to build armament. And that's what the Venus Project is about. How to overcome the need of, of military systems. Other possible alternatives. I get a lot of heat from this topic. The what nothing thing. Nasty remarks? Uh, not nasty, just uh, long, long... Well, you're long taking away... Well, when do you tell million. people that the Earth uh, or that evolution enables organisms to move up the scale. When do you do that? When you do that, you offend all the church people. Do you understand that? When you talk of evolution, they say, that's a terrible concept, we're coming from the apes. I don't come from an ape. I come from God making a man and a woman. And when you talk about evolution, you threaten people. And the point is, every new idea threatens somebody. So, it isn't the idea of just feel threatened. The idea is to consider what I'm talking about and thinking about it and asking questions about it. Question the hell out of it. In other words, I don't ask you to accept what I say. If you like the idea of building a monument to veterans rather than equipping the veteran hospital with things that they like or shortages, if you don't agree with that, you can say, well, I like a monument. Do it. If you do it, you hurt a lot of veterans. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't say don't do that. I just said it's a nothing thing. It doesn't help the majority of people. And novels don't teach people anything. Most novels, books, written about my wonderful 20 years with my husband. Uh, that might teach people certain things, that it's possible to live 20 years and love somebody. But it doesn't tell you how to do that. It doesn't tell you how to listen to other people's ideas that differ from your own without getting angry. It doesn't teach you. So all people seek information until you say, wait a while, there's nothing the matter with music, I love it. 
if you don't, that's not sharing ideas, that's establishing, talking what you believe in. It's not sharing ideas. Why is it that some people like beans and some don't? Their taste buds respond differently. You can't make the same kind of food for all people. They will not enjoy it. People, the same for music. You can't design music that everybody will enjoy. You can design music that certain people that were conditioned to that type of music, they will like it. But you can't say music is good for people or bad for people. You can say if they learn things that are useful in life, how to relate without getting angry, how to share ideas that are very different than your own, trying to share, as you do, you try to share your ideas with me. You say, Jack, you're trying to caution me and say, look, there's millions of people out there, you're going to lose them if you hit that too hard, is what you're trying to tell me. I understand what you're trying to tell me, but I want to know if you withhold things, yes, you'll get along with more people, but it'll only perpetuate the old values. How did you arrive at the understanding that music is a nothing thing? I used to love music, and I used to listen to music, all the, the classicals in the old days, and I used to hum and sing music. And so I, I then learned more about science, and if I spent my time learning more about the physical world, it was better than listening to music, because it never gave me any tools for anything. Do you know a doctor, without his basket, without his container of medical instruments, can do nothing. So, what's a tool? A tool is something you know how to use. If you don't know how to use it, if, you, if he collects surgical instruments, just he collects them, but he shows other surgeons the history and development of surgical instruments, that's useful. If he collects surgical instruments and puts them in a museum, so people can see in the old days how they used a hammer and a sword to cut the leg. They didn't, they didn't have other means. It's useful in the museum, not in his house alone. Then it becomes, because he knows what he's got. If other people don't know it, they can't learn anything. Unless he invites them over and says, hey, let me show you how people used to try to fly. And you saw movies of men jumping off barns and buildings with little wings and broke their legs. Say, boy, the Wright brothers didn't do it all, did they? Other people did something that enhanced their values. But it was their deaths and their suffering and their inquiry into how to fly. Some gave up because they could no longer do it physically. You know, they were damaged. And But there were some people that stayed with it. And though, I want you to know, people that stayed with the flying machine did not receive encouragement from others. Hey, that's a wonderful thing. You're sticking by, and you're trying to fly, even though you crashed three planes that you built that took you 10 years to make. Very few people encourage people to take a new path. When Darwin came out with his theory of evolution, a lot of people were upset and angry. Millions of people. Now, he could have said God works through evolution and get along with people, but he'd be lying. The point is, I don't know of any way of advancing society without taking the structures that they work with and try to identify that which is useful against that which is not. Now, how do you deal with special things like laying on of hands? I know a case where a person was suffering immensely and her husband just ran his hands by the body. He says, I no longer feel the pain. Because we understand the placebo effect. And, and as long as you know the placebo effect is at work, it's okay. And if it calms a person, use it. Now, if you go to a psychologist, and some of them are able to help you deal with that problem, why don't you confront your husband? and say, I'd like to see you home, sharing your responsibility with the kids. Share those ideas. If you don't talk to him, like, I wish he'd understand that. That doesn't work. That's a nothing thing. Wishing that another person would understand you. If you don't work on that other person and say, what is it that you object to? And try to get the feel that they have and try to come at them in a way 
they can understand how you mean what you're saying. Because if, if you don't explain it, they will project you're very inconsiderate. There are musicians that work all their lives to make pleasant music to please people. And you say music is a nothing thing. Well, that's because you haven't taken into account the background of the person. Now, if you build a monument to veterans that cost $5 million, they say, we honor the men that gave their lives for this country. I'd rather take that $5 million and put MRI equipment in the hospital, surgical equipment, larger staff, and more facilities for those that lost their legs, wheelchairs, and other things. I would never build a monument with limited scarcity. Unless we have super abundance, then you can do both. Right now, we don't have that. So I would call the Eiffel Tower a nothing thing. Commercially, people go to France to see the Eiffel Tower. It brings business to France. I understand that. And it's a symbol. But all symbols represent what? Profit? Motive? Do you use decoration on buildings and say, I built the tallest building in the world? But if I build the most powerful generator in the world using minimum energy, that would be more important than the tallest building in the world. I don't see the gain of the tallest building in the world. But I do see the gain of a country say we have more schools and more education and science than all the other countries combined. I would see that as a something thing. When I use the word science, I mean giving people the best knowledge we have regarding what we know, and also admitting what we don't know. We don't know how to cure cancer. We are not able to control it sufficiently. We need more time, more money to support research in that area so we can learn more. Or we need more equipment rather than money. It isn't money that you need. With money, if you gave millions of dollars to a research foundation, they convert that money into instruments, surgical instruments, research labs, additional buildings to do research in. So you don't really need money. What you need is control of the resources, to make resources available, so you don't have to dig up nickels and dimes. If there's an earthquake in Japan, uh, like there has been, they go into schools, many people, and they say, can you bring in some care packages or a box of oatmeal or something to feed the poor Japanese? Well, we would have all that in a resource-based economy. We don't have such words as, I'm sorry to hear there was an earthquake in Japan. I'm sorry that 4,000 people lost their lives. What did you do about it? Nothing. That's a nothing thing. Did you try to advocate flexible structures that can move in an earthquake? Did you survey the area before you built a nuclear plant? No. So to the degree that you don't study the area, you can't make contributions. Don't get mad at me because I call something a nothing thing. I mean it's nothing in terms of the majority of people. So the Eiffel Tower could become many different things in the future. I would say, unless you have other questions. Okay, Jacques, how do you define an intelligent person? By their ability to extract significance from any situation. Last week you said that the gap between technology and social systems will be bridged with time. Can you please explain how you see it happening? Only if we move toward a scientific community or use more of the methods of science in arriving at decisions rather than opinions. What other projects is the Venus Project currently working on besides a motion picture? We're also finalizing prints for the first city. We are working with, uh, well, we're approaching an architectural firm that we've had communication with, architectural and engineering firm, and hopefully we'll be working with them to get a quote. Once we get the quote, we have somebody who feels she can get the funding for them to go ahead and develop the final plans and engineering. 
and we have met with a construction firm that is going to work with them and get us a quote for the first city. So that takes a lot of time in itself. They will be working with Jock directly in finalizing a lot of details in order to do the final prints and engineering. We also constantly have a lot of communications that we're doing with different groups who get in touch with us. I'll mention more of those when anything goes through. We are working constantly on the old tapes that we have and editing them. We're categorizing, we're archiving everything here at the moment also. There's somebody here now who's working with us on doing that. The tours are still every Saturday. We're still working on the land and fixing up things here that need repair and things like that. We do a lot of radio shows still. We have three film crews coming in the next month or so, three or four, who are doing new documentaries, so that takes a lot of time as well. That's about it right now. There's a lot of other things that I can't remember offhand. Okay, what are the issues we must pay attention to so the ideals of a resource-based economy are not perverted? We must learn how to use our existing resources intelligently so we don't waste materials until we develop nanotechnology. In the meantime, we have to work on conditions as they are today. all kinds of information made available in various methods as to how scientists arrive at decisions. They don't just make decisions, they arrive at them by testing things. And in the future, people will get into much less argument and confusion when they learn how to relate to one another in a significant way. How can a person grown up in today's system condition himself to have good audiodidactic skills? Well, first of all, I would say that you should correspond with us and we can give you a list or check our website and we can give you a list or read our book, The Best That Money Can't Buy. Learn from the Venus Project just what procedural systems we use. Instead of discussing it on the air, it would be very difficult. We have a lot of posted information on the internet. Check it out. Yes, if you learn about the Venus Project, you'll learn about a new direction. That's what's missing out there. Nothing points to a direction. There's a lot of criticism and people who are not satisfied, but they don't point as to what system would be best to work toward. If you get a better understanding of the system, you will understand more things that are superfluous that you're reading and kind of eliminate that type of education or that type of literature that you're learning and go right to the point of what could help support a resource-based economy or the values and that are advocated by the Venus Project. Who gets to decide what the machines prevent and what they don't prevent? From my understanding of all I've read and watched on the Venus Project, it's not up to any individual or group. It's about applying what works based on validation and consequences. So who gets to decide what machines prevent and what they don't prevent? The people that are qualified to do that kind of work. If you want to put up a building, you, you consult an architect. If you want to put up a bridge, you consult a bridge engineer. But a bridge engineer do not consult for human problems, value system problems. In other words, Various people are trained in various aspects of social operation. Consulting the correct people for each given task is what people will learn more so in the Venus Project. You don't ask your brother-in-law what a good or safe aircraft would be like. He doesn't understand those things, therefore he cannot tell you that. What technical solutions would be decided to prevent people from making socially offensive behavior. A 
deeper understanding of the methods of science and why they've arrived at those methods and how they arrive at those methods. In other words, it's a validation of consequences. Yes. What is the aim of going to Russia? We were invited to speak in Russia. They're doing a whole day's event designed around the Venus Project. They and want to know more about the Venus Project and how it can be applied in their country. Of course, the kind of training that Russians got years ago was not about the methodology for achieving a unified world. They believed that if more people knew about communism, that would unify the world. It takes more than that. It takes specific training in given areas to, in order to accomplish a given task. What people seek is predictability. And the only way you get predictability is by a careful study of nature, how it works, and the consequences of any behavior that's detrimental to the well-being of people. The more people that are better educated, the richer the world. There would be no one that couldn't afford to go to school because schools would be free. There would be no taxation. Anyone can study anything they wish to study, but they would not have to have purchasing power in order to do that. Also, the people who have invited us out to Russia, they are very interested in the possibility of having the first city as well. They would like to do a first city in Russia. So the day after the meeting, we will be meeting privately with people that they are setting up to hopefully initiate a city plan. So we're working on that. We're working toward that. What will happen, we will let you know. Do you think leveling technology up on society will break out money system, poverty, social rights, and more? I'm not sure what that person is no, asking. I'm you not know? Sure either. Yeah, sorry. If you could say that in a different way, we'll give that a try later. Would your project have gone further if you worked with the mainstream academic world? Not at all. You want to elaborate on that at all? No, I don't need to. They'd have to be broken in as to what the Venus Project is and why it was designed the way it was and why our cities look the way they do. They would have to understand those details in order to get into a comprehensive discussion of the operation of a resource-based economy. Schools are really out there in universities to perpetuate the system that they're in. And they even have a lot of advertisers and support from those who have made it in this system and sometimes not too eager to understand or look into anything that's drastically new. But although I think more schools are beginning to introduce a resource-based economy, how can people do away with ego? It isn't doing away with ego. Asking a question, what function does it serve? And if it doesn't serve a function, what you have to do is give people the tools that they don't have for increasing their knowledge about the world they live in. They need instruments and information in order to outgrow the insufficiency of a former civilization. Jacques mentioned people would be able to learn much faster using learning theory in schools. I wonder what empirical evidence is there in behavioral science to suggest it's a possibility. I don't know what behavioral science has collected in that area, but I can tell you this. If you use diagrams, visuals only, so that people watching a lecture or a description of a process, they will have the same associations. We don't want things subject to interpretation. Like I pointed out many times, when you read the Bible, it's subject to interpretation. When you listen to a lecture at a university, it's also subject to interpretation. So we need visual displays of how things go together and how things work so people come off with the same thing intended in the delivery of information. 
In other words, to demonstrate as much as possible evidence to the condition that you're advocating, to present supportive evidence only. Can the creation of a resource-based economy political party help to achieve some of the Venus Project goals? I understand that there's people running in different parts of the world under the name resource-based economy. That name's been bantied around a lot with a lot of different meanings. And if the people use that word in regards to a political party and talk about it sufficiently with the understanding of how it originated, and what it means, and I think it's great to be able to get the information out there any way that they can. Yes, you try to get it out there as best you know how. In a resource-based economy, if a point where there's no more aggressive behavior is never reached in society, what restraining methods will be used in these people? Only knowledge. There are no restraining methods. When you have knowledge in a given area, you present that knowledge. If it's not clear, you check it out. If you don't have any clear-cut conclusions, you put the ideas to test. Just like a metallurgist does. He mixes different metals together. He doesn't know what they will do. When he mixes them together, he finds out that certain metals are very rigid, good for structures. Some metals are flexible, good for other purposes. After that work is done, then you can more appropriately decide what method you want to use. Do you think that we could eliminate aggressive behavior completely? By aggressive behavior, do you mean ego? Do you mean insisting that your method is right? You don't insist, you show evidence to each method. Any significant updates on the major motion picture? Any producers or directors at this point? We're working on the script right now. We have contracted somebody to do a first run of a script that we felt would have the best chance of working with us more appropriately. And we will be seeing something in mid-September. So we can better address that question then. Once we have the script, we feel we could get the producer and director. And we have several contacts in order to start searching that out as well. Is there a recording of Jacques talking about how to use art and media, more specifically film, television, and video games to influence or even change people's values? Get books like Introduction to Physics. Get books like Explain the Nature of the Weather, Agriculture, or any real field. Get a technical book on the subject. Become well-versed in that system. They're asking about if there's recording of Jacques, of you talking about art and media. I made no recording of that except nothing things. Any of the topics that Jacques talks about could be converted into different ways of presenting the ideas in film and television and video games. This is what we're trying to do with the major motion picture as well. It's been done effectively in certain documentaries. So if you get a better understanding of the values and the direction of the Venus Project, then there are different ways that you can present them. And that could be through film, television, and video games, or anyway, even music, if the words are there to help people understand the concepts, then music becomes a something thing. And yeah, referring to rap sessions, where you describe with music concepts and ideas. Some people can learn that way. Others yeah. learn by direct communication. Some learn better with the presentation done on a musical basis. So we use whatever method is effective. In the book, Engineers in the Price System, the author talks about technicians and engineers as main driving forces of the economy, why do you think they don't organize themselves to change social systems? Because they're comfortable now. Most engineers have jobs, and most engineers receive prestige from the corporations today. So even during the Russian Revolution, engineers left the country because they were part of the wealthier group 
of people. So they had a bunch of peasants to start with. Engineers are not necessarily broad outside their particular field. When engineers become well versed in the nature, into sociology, social psychology, the history of civilizations, they will be different than just applying mathematics to structures. I think one of the reasons you see very little change because our school system, they educate people in just very narrow disciplines in order to get work and perpetuate what already is. If you taught them too much, if you taught them how to be critical thinkers in all areas of society, you couldn't organize people. They would be questioning everything and looking for new ways of doing things. So you couldn't get them to go to a job nine to five and just work at one little discipline while the rest of the world is kind of falling apart. They would question everything and try and work out solutions in all other areas, not just the one they'd been assigned to. If you don't understand that, in the old days, people couldn't picture a horseless carriage. They couldn't picture how a machine would fly. In fact, many scientists wrote books on why man cannot fly, rather than saying, I can't conceive of how to build a flying machine. They said, man will never get to the moon. Instead of saying, I can't see how that can be accomplished, which is the truth. Not saying man will never get to the moon. That's your own limited opinion. Do you believe we are born as a blank slate? No, because we fall to the ground if we were born as a blank slate. We have many conditioned and inborn reflexes, like the knee reflex, the eyelid coming down, and movement. We have a lot of inherited movements but we do not inherit a value system, meaning we're not born to be jealous or envious or greedy. That is not an inborn process. That's learned by the culture you're reared in. Yeah, you're not born with any type of a value system. So if you're talking about that in regards to a blank slate, yes. Why did you pick Joel and Larry, other than many others who wanted to work with the Venus Project? What was the criteria? There wasn't much of a criteria. There was just circumstances at the time that they ended up living here on a long-term basis. Yes. They were able to function well in a given area. Mm -hmm. And anybody who moves here really changes a lot. So they too have changed a lot because as Jacques gives lectures that we're recording, we all sit in on them and we all ask questions or we ask questions. A lot of these lectures that we're playing, they come about because we ask questions that other people have written in and we record them. I really wish we had room for a lot more people. We could get a lot more done here. We cannot afford to build accommodation. Washrooms, right. buildings, dormitories, we're not in that position at this time. Right. Have you considered converting Rings of Venus to a comic book? Rings of Venus was a book done by Pat McCord. I'll tell you a little bit of background on that. After 9-11, she got really disgusted and she went to her bookshelf and she wanted to pick out something that was positive and read it. So she did. She got a book. And we don't even have that book out there. It's been converted to the best that money can't buy and extended upon. But she read the book and called Jacques. It was an old book that she had bought from the World Future Society. They carried this book of Jacques in the past. And she read it and decided she wanted to make a book along these lines about the Venus Project. So she came over sure. and spent many hours. And then she collaborated with Jacques along the way of doing this book. She's an accomplished author for children's books. And I thought the book was really very good and gave kids a lot of incentive to think about things in different ways. So I think she is willing, we've talked about this before, she is willing to do it into a comic book, but she would have to regulate how that's done. Will there be a conclusive biological film book about Jock before he's dead? I would love to see that. 
but we haven't been approached by anyone in regards to doing that. We have had Jack talk about his life experience and his history. We have about, I don't know, 20 hours of that just alone because there was somebody else who was going to attempt a book on that and they did, but they wrapped it around a storyline as well. So if there is any accomplished writers out there who would be interested in doing a biography on Jacques, I can see how it could be a wonderful film in itself. Is there anything from Walden 2 which directly influenced you, Jacques? Skinner's book, Walden 2. No, I would say I had arrived at many of these conclusions long before Skinner. Fresco has said humans have emotions, so music can motivate people to do many things, including exercise, keep stress levels down, combining it with education through documentaries. Is Fresco really using semantics? Because everything is used in combo. Yes, if you do that, music becomes a something thing. I've indicated that continuously in my presentation. Do you think it's good contacting governments directly and tell them they are sleeping? No, they wouldn't understand what you were talking about. They'd call you some sort of misfit. This person is asking about romantic relationships today. Resource are based on mutual ownership. Could you elaborate on procedural systems that the Venus Project offers to condition people out of these patterns, specifically the procedural systems for eliminating feelings of ownership and jealousy? Yes, read the book, The Best That Money Can Buy. This person has read that book. Can you talk about how to surpass ownership amongst people, personal relationships and jealousy? Okay. You really don't own anything when you think about it. You know, if you have a hundred acres of land, when you kick the bucket, it goes to somebody else. So ownership in the Venus Project would mean access to the necessities of life without a price tag. It isn't ownership that you want. It's access to the necessities of life. And ownership in the past has given you access to the necessities of life, but only those that were wealthy that had access to purchasing power. So we would say that we would make all things available, college education, free of cost. I think this person is talking about in relationships with one another. It's based on the notion that they own another person or the concepts of jealousy. You never own anybody. No one is subservient to anyone else in the Venus Project. They merely carry out what they've been assigned. Aeronautical engineers design airplanes. Bridge engineers design bridges. Health people study food and nutrition. They're not brought up with that in the first place. Our schools are very different. None of the traditional values are perpetuated except those branches of science which serve the needs of people. Do you think also that you can surpass this notion of jealousy oh, when there are absolutely. many people that can fulfill certain emotional needs amongst people? It's the notion of thinking it's just one person that can do that is kind of erroneous and detrimental in some ways. In the future, if they understand that many people can serve different needs that an individual might have, then the notion of jealousy might be surpassed. Yes, I think jealousy will not even occur in the future. If a person does something better than you do, or much better than you do, you might question, how do you accomplish that? How do you go about doing that? In other words, you look into it. You would not have jealousy in a relationship, but you would understand that you're not meeting another person's needs, and they seek certain needs. It doesn't mean that what they seek is correct, if a person seeks a different type of relationship that needs a lot of flattery in order to stay in a relationship, if you don't provide for that need, the relationship will not work. But in the Venus Project, relationships 
become a science, not some arbitrary system that you inherit from your culture. Will we be stopping in London to lecture on our way to Russia? We are stopping for a few days in London because we don't want to make a long trip. It's just too hard to go from the United States to Russia directly. So we are stopping in London for a few days. We don't have any plans to do a lecture there at this time. So I just don't know what will come up in regards to that. Jacques, how much research have you done into neuroscience? Can it be used to validate behaviorism and reinforcement from the environment? No, all that neuroscience will tell you is what different portions of the brain control. Some areas record speech, some areas the brain movement, some areas the brain eating or physiological processes. But studying the brain will not tell you anything about the acquisition of values. If you could have written more books, would you? Yes, there's always more books to be written. There's always more books on design of aircraft, houses, transportation. It's a constantly changing process, and we would update our system by doing different publications if we had um, the facilities to do that. Jack spent a lot of time, more time lecturing to groups of people that used to come to his home two and three times a week. They were the same groups of people or a lot of times new people came in. And we have over probably 200 hours of those tapes right now. A lot of them we're trying to transcribe and we're considering putting them in a book. It takes a long time to do that and we're editing them as well. So these are some other things we're doing here and they just take a long time, but these are end goals that we would like to do with those tapes is to compile them in a book. Or if not just a book, then what we call the university on our website, we'd like to use it for that as well. Would it be to begin creating a network of people dedicated to improving the autonomy of the masses in order to brace for the transition, like planting far more co-op gardens and replicating 3D printers for people. Well, if you have the finance to do that, yes, do that. We're really not looking for groups of people to do cooperative ventures for gardening. We're trying to educate people toward a whole new global social approach to society because and just working on an individual basis to solve their own needs within a community, although that's a good idea to do, to work through a transition that might be helpful for people, but that won't solve the main problems. If that co-op or group of people are taking the opportunity to learn about this direction and introduce this direction to as many people as possible, then that's all more helpful than just raising food and working with 3D printers. Yes, this is correct. And I assume that the person probably meant more than just that, but that was the question. Jacques, do you mind describing why you feel the human form is not necessarily the ideal form? Well, I think it'd be a little better if we had an eye in the back of our head. It would be better if our earlobe was structured differently. It'd be better if we just had two holes leading upward rather than the projecting nose that projects forward. When you fall, you damage the cartilaginous substance in the nose. It's just two holes moving upward that we need. So I would say that the human body eventually will be redesigned to be more appropriate to the nature of the physical world. I think I've heard you talk about how the blood vessels go every which way and they... Yeah, the blood vessels do not go straight and branch out mathematically. In other words, there's a lot of random biological processes that can be improved considerably. But that's in the future. With nanotechnology and biological science so advanced that we can affect the genes 
in different ways to reorganize tissue. In other words, instead of people donating organs in the future, we will be able to raise new kidneys, livers, eyes, whatever we needed, so people wouldn't have to donate their own organs. I see extension of life too, extension of living substances far beyond what is considered normal today. I think why humans are really not the ideal form, we're just in a stage of evolution, but we wouldn't get as sick as we do if we were more ideal. I don't think there is any ideal, that just a form that might be more appropriate to the environment we live in, but we're polluting the environment so much that there's a lot of problems with sickness and illness and due to what we're doing as well. All that has to be taken into account in the future in a resource-based economy. We wouldn't pollute the air or the water or our food. Man is not separate from the environment. We're part of nature. And if we fail to recognize that, we're only going to hurt ourselves. Did you try and stop your son from going into the army? I'm not that concerned with my son. I'm more concerned with all people. I look at all people as brothers and sisters. I have no priority for members of the family. Your son was mostly raised by your ex-wife at the yes. time, too, yes. wasn't it? So she yes. had many other influences. Yes. Do you approve of the methods of manipulation, lying about the facts, etc., to convey better value systems of the Venus Project? Not really. If people can understand it, be direct with them and give them real information. If you have to use deceptive methods, always describe that this may be a deceptive method or this may be temporary method to help you understand. After you accomplish what you want, say that you did use a deceptive method, if you did, and describe it and why you used it. When a person says to a doctor, how much long have I got to live? He doesn't say you live another 30 days and then you drop dead. He says, look, we're working on that problem continuously. We never know when someone may come up with an answer. Sure, he can tell you you'll probably live a month and a half, but that wouldn't serve any useful purpose. So what they do is they edit what they say to a certain extent. If a person is very hysterical, you're not about to tell them that this is only the beginning of agony. Okay, when a person hears Fresco say music is a nothing thing, they automatically get upset because they love music. Yes, does, I understand. Does Fresco like music? Not anymore. They also said everything has many interacting variables. This is the same with music. So what does fresco really mean when a person hears? It depends on each individual's interpretation of what I say. I can't communicate with people and give them the same basis of facts that I have because they don't have it. I can only talk in existing language and I can only talk in a method, the only method I know of to try to reach people. I'm not always successful. I'd like you to know that. When was the last time you watched mainstream television? Well, I watch it just to keep up with what the nations are doing. But I also know that each nation puts its own propaganda and interprets the news in a way that would be favorable to that nation. I'm quite aware of that. So I watch the news only to know of the weather mainly. I watch the weather because I'm concerned with that, and the Weather Bureau is pretty accurate at describing the conditions that lie ahead. But I know that news is managed, and I listen to news with that knowledge. Even with the best education and mental health, isn't it still probable that at least some murders will happen? Unless you're talking about a damaged brain, that would be detected real early and people would be confined to an institution whereby they're helped as best we know how at the time. 
if a person is born with a damaged brain and creates a lot of havoc, they would be removed from society and helped to whatever extent we can help. They would not be punished or hurt. There'd be no prisons, no police, no armies, and no navies. Okay, I guess that's about it for today. Thank you very much for your participation. Yes, we, thanks everyone. We deeply appreciate that. I'm sorry if I don't answer all your questions. I'm just doing the best I know how with my background. Okay, thanks, Jack.